All right, stereochemistry. In order to understand stereochemistry, we need to understand what isomers are. Now, two molecules are isomers if they have the same molecular formula. So, for instance, right here I have C2H6O. Well, that's a molecule with two atoms of carbon, six atoms of hydrogen, and one atom of oxygen. Now, those could be arranged in all different kinds of ways. And depending on how they're arranged, determines what type of isomer we have. So an isomer can't be something by itself. It has to be something in relation to something else. Like you can't say five is greater than because greater than what? Five has to be greater than three when you're comparing it. Same thing with isomers. You can't just have one molecule and say that's an isomer. It has to be an isomer of something else. So Let's talk about the two different kinds of uh, isomers here. There's a constitutional isomer and a stereoisomer. Now, a constitutional isomer differs by its connectivity. What I mean by that is, let's take this, this compound, C2H6O. Well, I've built one of these here with a model kit, and you can see that there are, the black ones are carbons, so we have two carbons, and then one, two, three, four, five, six atoms of hydrogen, and one atom of oxygen. Now that, this is uh, actually um, ethanol, and if we look at this molecule here, this is, um, what is this, Di <laughs> uh, dimethyl ether, sorry. And you can see this also has one, two carbons, and one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens, and one oxygen. But if you see, they're different in their connectivity. So if we look at this one, we could say, okay, these two carbons are connected to each other, and then there's one uh, oxygen attached to this one carbon. Whereas with this one, we have a carbon attached to an oxygen attached to a carbon. So these are different in connectivity, therefore these are constitutional isomers. They have the same molecular formula, each one has two carbons, a total of six hydrogens, and one oxygen each, but they're, they, they're connected in different ways. Now a stereoisomer has the same connectivity, but it's, they differ by the arrangement of atoms in space. Now, you'll read that in your textbook and you're like, what are you even talking about? Different in, by the arrangement in space. And here we go. I'm going to start with this guy right here. You can see we have one white, one orange, one purple, and one green, all connected to this guy. Now, the thing about carbons is they're sp3 hybridized so that means that they like to have four things bonded to them and the nature of three-dimensional space is that if you have four things attached to one thing they could be arranged in different ways in space now let's compare here so if, if we look at this right here we have the white one I'm gonna rotate this white one away from you okay and now we have a green one on the top an orange one to the right, I think that's right as, as you're looking at it, and a purple one to the left. Okay, now here we have another molecule, but now if we look at this, it also has one white one, one orange one, one purple one, and one green one attached to that carbon. But if we look at this, let's take the white one, rotate it away from us, we'll put the green one on top, just like this one, and we have instead of the orange being on the right side this time the orange is on the left side and that makes it different you may say well that's a pretty small difference you know how could that what does it matter that it's you know arranged differently in space well it turns out that the molecules in your body right like um, the chemical signals in your brain they have to have a certain configuration in order for them to work Think about when you're a kid and you're trying to put 
the square peg through the round hole. It doesn't work. It's the same way in your brain. With a certain drug or whatever, let's say like Tylenol or, um, you know, I, I'm not sure. I'm just going to, you know, pull something out of it. I just said Tylenol. Well, it's arranged in a certain way in space. And your brain is like the round hole. There's, there's certain places in your brain, the neurons in your brain, have the round hole. And unless this round <laughs> molecule comes the right way, then it's not going to receive it. It's going to be like trying to put the square peg in the round hole. It's not going to fit. So like, let's, let's look at that here. Let's say, okay, we have this guy, which is arranged differently from this guy. We can see they're not, they're not the same, right? And so let's say there's a receptor in your brain. This, this part of the receptor likes orange, this part likes green, and this part likes purple. And if they're arranged in the right way, then everything lines up perfectly. But if it's not arranged in the right way, let's see what happens. So this one liked green, but this one was supposed to be purple. It doesn't line up the right way. Or this one was supposed to be orange. You see what I'm saying? How these two don't fit. So that's a stereoisomer. They have the same connectivity. The carbon is attached to a green one. The carbon is attached to a, an orange one, a purple one, and a white one. Same thing here. It's one carbon attached to this, attached to this. The same way when we had this guy, the ethanol, we had a carbon attached to a carbon attached to this. It's attached the same way, but now they're different in their arrangement in space. Now we're going to get way into this, and right now this is just an introduction, okay? So these guys, they're connected the same. We have one carbon attached to orange, green, a purple and a white, same as this, but they're different in space. Now there are two different kinds of stereoisomers. So these are stereoisomers, and there's two different kinds. One kind is an enantiomer. That means that these stereoisomers are mirror images of each other. And then there are diastereomers, <laughs> diastereomers, which are not mirror images. So in this case, let's just see if these are mirror images. Okay, well I have the white, I'm gonna hold it this way, and as you can see we have the purple pointing towards you, the orange pointing towards me, and the green pointing up. Well, if I were to reflect this across a mirror, it should look, well, <laughs> it should look like this. Because this would ref the purples would reflect this way, they would both be facing out, these guys would reflect this way, and these guys would reflect this way. So as you can see, they are mirror images of each other. So these would be enantiomers. Now on the other hand, we have diastereomers. That is, they, they have the same connectivity, they're two molecules that have the same connectivity, but they're not mirror images of each other. So here I've built just some crazy looking things here. And if you see this, we have two greens in the back. On this side, we have two blues and two reds. Here, we have a molecule that has the same connectivity, that is, two carbons attached to each other. Each one of those carbons is attached to one blue, one green, and one red. But as you can see, they're not mirror images of each other. If they were mirror images of each other, then this guy right here, this red guy, would be blue, right? And there's no way that you could arrange these that's going to make them mirror images. So these are diastereomers. Now we're going to go into uh, naming of these guys, how to name them, how to identify them, and that becomes really important in organic chemistry. And um, let's see. So yeah, we'll move on to that.